When Tropical Storm Allison blew into Texas, it dropped 10 inches of rain in a day. Actors have helped us reconstruct the events that began on June 26th. It was raining all day. The ditches were flooded. Of course, the kids are, well, this is fun. Patricia and Crystal were asking me all day long to go outside because they saw all the kids outside playing. By around 7 p.m., the storm had passed, and the floodwaters it left behind were draining away into Houston's storm drains and bayous. Karen Reese finally let her daughter, Tricia, and her niece go out and play in the front yard. Neighbor Ruth Strong happened to see them. I was in the kitchen, and I looked out the window, and I saw two little girls out there, and they got in the ditch. It was real deep, and the water was moving real fast, and Trish fell in. And I was trying to get her, but then she went under the water. It happened so fast that at first I wasn't sure I'd seen it happen. I started screaming for my husband to go out there to check to see if she was drowning. When she didn't come back up, then I ran through the back door, told Karen. I was scared. I just couldn't believe this was happening. My neighbor behind me was down there in the ditch trying to reach in there. I was putting my arm down in, inside the drain, fishing around trying, trying to catch her. It was too late. You know, she was then gone. Houston Fire and Amos, what's your emergency? I think my daughter got sucked down one of the things. How old is your daughter? She's seven. Was she out there playing with a bunch of kids or something? Yeah, and some, and some lady said she did see her go down. Please. And we'll be there quick as we can. Please. Fire Captain Bob Krennic and his men were the first rescue workers to arrive. When we were riding the scene, you couldn't tell just by the surface of the water how bad it was. It was just a little bit of a ripple on top of the water. So one of my men jumped into the, the ditch itself, and he told me that if he hadn't been as big as he was, that it probably would have sucked him down, too. The drainage pipe was only 18 inches wide. We got a uh, pipe pole to check to make sure nothing was in the pipe. And when we ran the pipe pole through the culvert, there was nothing in there. On the other side of the road, the pipe drained into a gutter. So then we went to the gutter and looked for her in this area, which was approximately four feet deep. And we couldn't find her in there. The storm waters were crashing through the drainage system at 40 miles an hour. Manhole pipe was full of water and it was rushing at a pretty good flip down there. We just thought it'd been impossible for anybody to, to hang on. I just kept on crying, crying to Trish, just asking her to hold on. She's fragile. You know, she's not a fighter. I felt helpless. The police dive team arrived, but there was little they could do. We felt the chance of survival at the pipe site itself was very minimal. If she had got swept out to the bio, she might have had a chance to live. So at that point, the divers went down the bio, the drain coming into the bio was checked, and they, they searched the bio and up and down the banks for an hour or so and came up with nothing there. We had men on the bio banks themselves searching for her. We had them on bridges watching to see if she'd come by. The longer the search went on, we just had a, a real bad feeling. They had been searching for more than three hours with no sign of Tricia. The hardest part was just standing there, watching them working at that drain. It just seemed so futile because there wasn't anything anybody could do. So the dive team came back and gave one more final check and came up with nothing. That's when they decided that it was time to call it off. And it was just like a hopeless feeling when you know you've done everything you can do and you still didn't find anything. I couldn't believe it. I just kept the thing, why Trish, not Trish? Trisha, no. You have your hopes that she's out there alive. Then you have your hopes that, you know, that if she is dead, that she's with Jesus and Jesus is going to take care of her. But then again, I'm, I'm angry at Jesus for taking her. It was not time to take her. Very early the next morning, 
before the police dive team returned for its final search. Trisha's 15-year-old cousin, De Vincent, set out to look for her one more time. I didn't want to believe she was gone, you know. I didn't believe it. I went a ways down the street, and I saw two guys. And they had blueprints in their hands, so I approached them asking, are y'all here looking for Trish? Tim Gabush and his partner were checking sewage pipes in the area for storm damage. We had heard about it on the radio, that a little girl had disappeared, and we just assumed the worst. And then he told us that this happened a couple of streets over. And we asked him, well, you want to show us where it's at? I didn't see how it was possible that she was still down in there after all the water that had been raging through the ditches. When I opened the manhole, the first thing went through my mind is I'd rather not find anything than a dead little child. I'll just check this one, Vincent. Can you hand me that flashlight when I get started? The storm waters had receded enough to allow Tim to climb down the manhole to the main storm drain. I shined the light down the line, and at first I thought I saw something, and I didn't want to believe it at first, and then I saw a little bit of movement, and then I more or less said to myself, is that a little girl in there? Little girl? And then finally I called out to her, and she answered back, who are you? She was hesitant about coming out at first. She said she wanted her mama, and I said, well, that's who we came to take you for. Your mama sent us to look for you, and she come crawling out to us into the pipe. I didn't know if she was dead or alive. And so I ran outside, and I saw this man carrying her about the middle of the street. And I saw the man carrying her, and she was holding her own head up. That, that was just the happiest right there. That's a scene. I wish I would have had a camera at the time, just the way she grabbed her little girl. She just took the little girl and started smothering her. <laughs> Everybody kind of got ecstatic and wild, you know. For more than 13 hours, Trisha had held out against the force of the storm waters by clinging to the wall of the three-foot-wide drain. It took a while to sink in that actually, you know, we found her. And then the more you think about it, the better you feel. It adds something to you, I guess. No matter what happens for the rest of the day, nobody can ruin this day. The city has put up a grade on the opening to the drainage pipe. Trisha was kept in the hospital overnight for observation and then released. There was nothing seriously wrong with her. I still play in my yard, but in the back, because I can still remember it. I missed my mommy, and um, my hands, they were um, wrinkled and all white. They weren't like my human hands. If you could have another million people fall in, I don't think any would live like she did. I have no idea how she held herself against that current. Everybody in the family always protected Trisha a little more than any of the other kids. You know, she's so little. Now I turn around on her, showing that she can do something. I always tell Trisha, you know, you went down that hole by yourself and you came out of it okay by yourself, so don't tell me you can't do nothing by yourself because you done did it. And thank God that, uh, you know, he gave me that miracle to, you know, look over her and make sure that she's going to be okay and come home.